Hey guys, it's Leginahas or Liam here. Uh, in this video today is my first video for Gaming Syndrome, and to the best of my knowledge, actually a world first video. Uh, this is a visual analysis of the attack, spawn, whatever you want to call it, of a Minecraft wolf against a Minecraft sheep. As you can see, I have a 3x4 uh, enclosure and another 3x4 enclosure with uh, two sheep in it and a 4x4, four four, well, 4x5, four they're actually all by 5, a 4x5 four enclosure with nothing in it. Now, what I will do is I will go, uh, I'm going to use the spawn mob plugin, so I will go spawn mob wolf. As you can see, there is now a wolf in there. If I lower these gates, see? Now, that probably wasn't the best of um, demonstrations, but what this video is aiming to demonstrate is that the wolf will not only now um, let me reset the test the wolf will not only um, pick a random target but it will also uh, there is a delay between the time that it takes to attack each target for some reason that wolf isn't burning to death mm. disappointing I designed that um that regeneration, uh, that this reset button, specifically to uh, to burn the wolf, so I didn't have to type slash butcher. But I will. Okay, I'm gonna do this again and try and uh, I'll, I'll just generate some sheep. Uh, I'm gonna try and um, do it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I am. I'm gonna try and show you that a, a lot better. Oh, I failed that one. Uh, spawn mob sheep. Okay, so um, what's going to happen is I'm actually going to walk down this time before I hit the gate. Uh, sorry about the video. Okay, so hit the gate. The, that time the wolf went for the sheep on the, well, let's call it the sheep on the left. Now, here's this delay I was talking about. Now, there it goes. Tax the sheep. Let's see if my reset works this time. Oh, disappointing. Okay, so uh, we'll do this once more. Mm, slash uh, spawn mob sheep. So you can see which. Uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll port like uh, have a slight pause before I hit the gate. So you can see that the wolf is in fact uh, not closer to the um. To uh, which sheep the wolf is closer to, um, for the purpose of this test. So as you can see, it's currently close to the sheep on the right hand side. If I hit this gate, this time it's attacked the sheep on the right hand side. Delay here, attacks the sheep on the left hand side. Uh, slash butcher. Okay, guys, um, I will continue these tests until I can find um, a, a finished result then I will um, post that result in the description you don't need to see me doing every single test so I'm going to stop that uh, I'm going to give you a preview of my next uh, experiments ignore this this is all just testing stuff but this here is what I um, I actually want to show you by using the limit FPS option on the um, Minecraft in the Minecraft video options, I can um, cap the FPS of Minecraft to 30 FPS, which I can then also sync my Camtasia to, which will then allow me to, by slowing the video down to one frame a second, to analyse the horizontal motion of a block of TNT once it's been fired. This here is just your uh, your basic. TNT cannon. Um, every Bob, Dick, and Harry knows how to make one of these. And what I will be testing in terms of uh, bollocks. I should have uh, given myself proper repeaters. Oh, that was um that was shabby of me. But the what this will be testing is what, what the difference that one block of TNT makes as opposed to two blocks of TNT as you can see by the cannon 
the block goes somewhere around there, and I can test the uh, using that that speed, that calculated speed for each block of TNT. I can then use um, par particle motion physics, where distance travelled is equal to uh, the equations. I've got them written down, but I couldn't remember them off the top of my head. And by doing that, I should be able to calculate optimal ranges for cannons based on um, how many blocks of TNT you load. Ah, uh, single, single um, block cannons as well, rather than. Uh, this is a stacked cannon over here. Just uh, this will, I can calculate this as well. But if I head, oh, let me make it daytime. If I head over to this this cannon over here, this is what we would call a. Um, no, well, actually, I don't know what the technical word for it. I call it a um, a linked cannon because you have um, multiple shots instead of just. Uh, and multiple charges. Oh, hello, creeper. Multiple shots and multiple charges, rather than just uh, one shot with multiple charges. And the TNT will each affect that slightly differently in terms of horizontal and vertical uh, trajectory because it's not just coming from behind the TNT. So um, that that in itself creates some problems. Not very many, but some where oh that's all right, I'm under my house. Uh this is yeah just my little work group. So uh that video should be coming to you sometime I don't know. Sometime in the next week, let's call it, you'll uh, be able to see my analysis of the Y uh no the X direction X axis movement of a block of TNT when under the the velocity of a block of TNT when under the effect of a single block of TNT, a multiple block of TNT, etc, etc, etc. Then I'll be showing you a couple of tutorials uh, such as how to create flashing floors, um, how to create cannons such as this one, and I will also be doing um, some videos on how to plan, in inverted commas, mega builds, I prefer the term uh, just a large build in Minecraft for example um, if I go slash home this sorry about the lag I'm teleporting around everywhere um, this here is when it loads is the framework for uh, my Asian uh, influenced pagoda and this here, I finished this before, but I had to roll the world save back. Um, it, it finished somewhere up. It finished in line with this railway here, basically. Uh, so it was fairly tall, and it's fairly round. And I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about how I planned building it, how I went about building it, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, same with this large pixel art Charizard over here. How, now I don't. Uh, I'm probably one of the few players who doesn't have a flight mod on this server, and that's because uh, I'm using a Macintosh, and it's a lot harder to install it on a Macintosh than it is on a Windows. So um, uh, me and another user did this Charizard entirely by hand. Oh, but I'll talk about that in uh, a subsequent video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you like it and. Uh, before we go anywhere, I'm just going to pause the video for 30 seconds uh, to uh, get another program up so I can tell you about an upcoming section I'm going to be doing. So I just have... Okay guys, sorry about that slight cut in audio there. What I am here to show you today is my Steam library. As you can see, I have uh, 55 games. I'll switch to the good view with minimal zoom. Minimal zoom. Um, what my upcoming segment is going to be is... Each, I don't know, week, maybe a bit more, I'm going to be recording myself uh, once I get my PC on. Like I said, I'm on a Mac. I dual boot with Windows 7. Uh, had some accident where it's compressed some file and I can't uncompress it yet. So until uh, I, I've managed to do that, I probably won't be able to do this segment. But I will do um, a segment each once I get it working, every whatever, uh, where I play a short section of one of these steam one of my 55 steam games 
uh, show you some gameplay and do a review, mini review. I'm probably not that good at reviews, but um, uh, yeah, and I'll be getting I'll be getting a lot more games over that period. I'm fairly regularly buying games, um, so until then, uh, this is Liam. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I hope you enjoyed watching my segment. And if you have a game you'd like to see me play first, just uh, feel free to let me know and I am more than happy to do it. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.